Hi everyone! This is a follow-up to my previous video in which I repaired this power supply. I found a few problems, one of which was seemingly fixed by cleaning a board, but I don't think so anymore, because the problem came back and it seems to be mechanical. Look, when I enable the output, we should see zero output here, but uh, we see an offset, about 0.75 volts right now, it was a bit lower before, but it's not very important. And I don't want to keep it on for a long time, because a couple of MOSFETs there get very hot. And I swear I could make it disappear and appear again when I just lifted the power supply like so. And put it back. Let's try. I've seen it disappear and appear again, but of course when I want to demonstrate, this thing does not cooperate. And I think this happens because when I lift power supply, power cord here hits the uh, bench and flexes the board inside of this thing a little bit. But now I cannot reproduce it anymore. So this might be tricky to find. Let's try. Here is this uh, mains power connector, and it is not attached to the back panel. It is soldered on the board, and there is some wiggle room, and it can flex the board a little bit. And I have seen the problem come and go when I wiggle this, but not anymore. Here we are inside, and the board is attached to the chassis here and here, so this section can flex a little bit, and perhaps this mechanical stress can travel a little farther, and uh, perhaps some soldering joint is cracked somewhere, and it might be quite tricky to find such a thing. I took the boards out of the case for convenience, and I soldered this uh, ground wire for use as a reference, because it is different from this earth ground, and I found that uh, the output we have seen, around uh, 0.7 volts or so, it is not a DC offset, but a result of an oscillation. This is the uh, output terminal. Uh, let's see. Let me turn the output on. And there you go. Uh, let's say about 25 volts peak to peak and uh, 26 or 27 kilohertz. I spent quite some time probing around, and I removed the diode here, which effectively disables this transistor, which pulls down. And now the oscillations are a bit weaker, but still I need to be quick, otherwise these transistors get very hot. And I found that uh, by pushing somewhere in this area, I can make the problem slightly less. It does not go away completely, but still there is some effect. Let's see, if I turn the output on, we read the point 43 or something. Let me turn this off for now. And when I push somewhere over here, I can make it go as low as point 0.35 I've seen sometimes. But most of the time point 0.38 or point 0.39. And when I release the pressure, it comes right back. Let's try. 0.4 and it goes back. 0.4 again and back to 0 0.42. 0 0.39 and back to 0.42. Something like that. Aha! I think I finally found the problem. It took me quite a while. I was mostly focusing in this area, because this is where applying pressure seemed to affect this oscillation. But finally I noticed here, I believe this capacitor is cracked, and there is a resistor next to it which is scratched. I'm not sure this is a problem and uh, if it is related or not. 
and there is identical, I believe, pair here. And uh, these have to do with sense lines uh, going from uh, this uh, connector on the back. And this switch is between local and remote sense. And if we grab my LCR meter, we can see that this good capacitor is about, let's say, 8.8 .8 nanofarads. And this one is 400 picofarads. There you go. And sure enough, I desoldered this bad capacitor and it fell apart. And I also desoldered this uh, good one to measure it. And out of circuit, I measure about 15 nanofarads. New capacitor is installed, and sure enough, the oscillation is gone. Thank you very much. Let's briefly look at this block diagram. Unfortunately, there is no full schematic. Oscillations can be quite tricky to find because uh, they go in circles and the problem can be almost anywhere. I tried isolating the problem by, let's say, removing this diode, which disconnected the feedback from uh, current sensors. And that did nothing because the problem was in the voltage feedback. And removing this diode stopped oscillations, of course, because it disabled the whole voltage regulation altogether. And I also removed this diode, which effectively disabled this current sinking transistor. And that helped to reduce the amplitude and gave more time to probe around, because these uh, two MOSFETs wouldn't overheat so quickly. And these two sense lines are shown here as just two wires and two resistors before this op-amp. In reality, it's much more complicated. There is a switch between local and the remote sense, and some more resistors and capacitors, including the ones we have seen. And in hindsight, it seems almost obvious to look for low-pass filtering somewhere in the feedback path. But how do you know if this thing is not even shown on the diagram? The power supply is back together and is working properly. No oscillation anymore. And this time I'm quite sure it is fixed for real. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure. Thanks for watching. Bye.